Welcome to the digital version of the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy's Natural History course. Hi, I'm Lisa Miller, lead steward with the McDowell Sonoran Conservancy. I'll be guiding you through the fauna class. This class deals with the animals found in Scottsdale's McDowell Sonoran Preserve. The class is divided into four segments. These segments include arthropods, amphibians and reptiles, birds, and mammals. Enjoy. If someone were asked which animals are the most abundant in the Sonoran Desert, more than likely their first thought would not include arthropods. This group of animals includes spiders, scorpions, centipedes, and insects. In fact, one acre of open creosote flats, which appears to be uninhabited land, could contain a million ants, our most abundant animal. Arthropods are invertebrate animals with hard outer skeletons, segmented bodies, and jointed legs. They account for 85% of all living animal species. It's a diverse group of organisms with over 15,000 species in the Sonoran Desert. Why are so many of these small creatures found in the desert? It all has to do with the arthropod's structure, size, capacity for rapid change, and the fact they have been on Earth for a very long time. An arthropod's hard outer skeleton, called an exoskeleton, is covered with a tough, waxy coating to keep them from drying out. If you've ever taken the abandoned empty shell of a cicada off the bark of a tree, you have held an arthropod exoskeleton. Their small size allows them to take advantage of even limited resources. A creosote katydid only needs to hang in the shade of a creosote stem to get protection from the sun. Small water droplets provide arthropods with sufficient moisture. Spiders can even drink from moist soil. Just one cubic foot of rotting suaro was found to hold 413 individual arthropods, including beetles, fly larvae, pseudoscorpions, and mites. Arthropods have the ability to evolve rapidly. They have a short lifespan, produce multiple generations each year, and have large populations. Through natural selection and under the right conditions, new traits and even new species can evolve. And since their beginning about 500 million years ago, arthropods have diversified greatly into many interesting and unique like forms. Let's begin a short investigation of a few notable arthropods found in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve. Scorpions have changed little in the 400 million years they have existed, yet there are over 30 species of scorpions in Arizona. The preserve is home to three of them. The striped tail scorpion is the most common. The least common scorpion, the giant hairy, is the largest, growing up to six inches long. The smallest scorpion, the bark scorpion, has the most potent toxin. Not only can it climb, it exhibits behavior known as negative geotaxis, which is the ability to walk against the force of gravity. So use caution if you lift rocks in the desert, because the bark scorpion may be clinging upside down on the underside of that rock. Scorpions will use the stinger at the end of their tail in defense, even though it is mainly used like a hypodermic needle to inject venom and subdue insect prey. Elf owls, pallid bats, and grasshopper mice are among the animals that feed on scorpions. One of the most interesting factors about these creatures is that they glow under ultraviolet light. Nearly all spiders are venomous. However, 
the largest spider in the Sonoran Desert, delivers a sting no worse than a bee. The Arizona blonde tarantula can grow to be the size of a person's hand. The tan female can live for nearly 25 years. The smaller male, which has a copper and red body and black legs, has a shorter lifespan. Tarantulas spend most of their life near their burrows, recognized as a one to two inch hole with silk across the opening. In winter, the tarantula seals the opening and remains inactive inside. During the summer rains, the tarantula males are frequently seen wandering in search of a mate. After copulation, the female will eat the male if she can catch him. Even if he does get away, male tarantulas die within months of mating. Tarantulas are nocturnal hunters that prey on animals from small arthropods to young rodents. Spiders, in turn, fall prey themselves to larger predators such as skunks and coyotes. To defend themselves, tarantulas kick urticating hairs from their abdomen into their attacker. These specialized backward-facing hairs are tipped with barbs that are difficult to remove and cause irritation. The tarantula hawk wasp might be a smaller tarantula predator, but it is no less intimidating. This pepsis wasp is nearly two inches long and exhibits aposematic or warning coloration with its striking black body and orange wings. In fact, the tarantula hawk wasp delivers the most painful stings of any insect in North America. Fortunately, it's not at all aggressive. While adults feed on nectar, the female hunts tarantulas to use as a host for feeding its larva. The wasp stings the spider, which paralyzes her victim. She drags it into a burrow, lays an egg on it, and covers the hole. After the egg hatches, the larva consumes the tarantula, which could remain paralyzed for months. Another parasitic insect is a tiny scale insect known as cochineal. The wingless and legless females and nymphs attach themselves to a prickly pear cactus and feed on the plant. They cover themselves with a white, waxy material for protection from water loss and the sun. Their body fluids contain a bright, crimson, foul-tasting substance called carminic acid. This protects the insect from predators, such as ants and ladybug larvae. For hundreds of years, this fluid has been used to produce a natural, deep red dye. Without the work of more than 40 species of termites in Arizona, there would be an overwhelming amount of dead plant material lying about the desert. Termites play a key ecological role in the decomposition and recycling of cellulose. Cellulose is the material that gives woody plants and grasses their structure. Even more interesting is that termites don't do it alone. They have a symbiotic relationship with either bacteria or protozoans. Termites depend on these microorganisms in their gut to provide the enzymes that digest wood. Look for mud covering the base of a swarrow after a monsoon rain. Under the mud, native termites, called the desert encrusting termites, will be building tunnels and feeding on layers of dead plant tissue. We tend to think of bees as living in highly structured social societies. Many, like the naturalized honeybee and the native sweat bees and bumblebees, do live in large colonies. The majority of the thousand species of bees in the Sonoran Desert, however, are solitary. They live alone and by themselves construct and provision nests. Cactus bee females dig burrows and create nests in the ground. Other bees, such as the leafcutter and mason bees, 
don't build their own nests, but use small abandoned beetle holes in agave stalks or tree limb. Desert bees range in size from the world's smallest, Perdita mimina, to the largest carpenter bees. All bees are herbivores except the parasitic cuckoo bees, which use other bees as their host. Herbivorous bees feed on protein-rich pollen and drink nectar to get energy for flight. Bees have specialized structures called pollen baskets to carry pollen back to the nest. Centrist bees have specialized scrapers on their legs for harvesting oil from ratney flowers. How important are bees? As much as 80% of desert plants and at least 30% of agricultural plants are pollinated by bees. This video was designed to give you a very brief overview and hopefully a better understanding of the arthropods that exist in the McDowell Sonoran Preserve. As you've seen, arthropods may be the least visible fauna, but they perform important role in the desert ecosystem. Flower pollination, decomposition, and nutrient recycling are just a few of the benefits of these diverse organisms.